So would you recognise Birmingham in that slide? Or well, sunset over Birmingham. <laughs> Taken from my bedroom window. Uh, Baroness Berber and Ashok, uh, eminent uh, guests and brothers and sisters. I'm uh, just going to talk, uh, obviously briefly, about um, family. And uh, we have a family festival coming up on February the 18th here in London and in Birmingham. So I'm just going to set it in a particular context in terms of finding common ground. And also I hope it will link into uh, what has already been said. Uh, a couple of perspectives, Lord Sachs, whom I uh, respect a lot myself, and uh, he wrote an article called The Politics of Anger, post-Brexit and, uh, I don't know if it was post uh, the American election, uh, probably a little bit before, or, or just after. And he said, uh, we are witnessing a new politi politics of anger, and there is only one viable alternative, it is the creation of a new politics of hope. That word has been used already a number of times. Uh, we need to rebuild our social ecology. When a civilization is in good order, it has institutions that provide support and hope in hard times. In the West, these have traditionally been families and communities. Neither is in a good state in the West today. Uh, the sooner we abandon the politically correct but socially disastrous view that marriage is outmoded, the better. We need to recover a strong, inclusive sense of national identity. I think that's been alluded to uh, before. If people are not to feel, if people are to feel that those in power care about the common good, not simply the interests of the elites, which has again been referred to by Keith and others. Uh, in the Times yesterday, um, I'm sure if it's good to bring up Tony Blair's name, but um, uh, Blair goes to war against the populace. He's talking about populism, and there have been other things such as um, the rise and rise of the referendum, uh, looking at Brexit and the American elections from slightly different perspectives. So he announced an institute, not a think tank, but an institute to develop centre ground policy to combat what he saw as uh, the anti-business on the left and the anti-immigrant on the right. Um, uh, but in other respects, he said what is remarkable is the convergence between them, especially around isolationism and protectionism, which Mark, I think, was referring to. He wanted essentially a closed-minded or narrow approach to globalisation and its benefits and to international engagement, which Keith was. So somehow we're all in sync, I think, and on the same page. Uh, Winston Churchill, democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the others. You may have heard that quote. And the best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter. Uh, Reverend Moon, Father Moon, spoke about headwing ideology. Uh, which some of you may be familiar with, and which uh, we had a conference in Southeast Asia, which Dr. Robert Kittle, a very prominent UPF guy in Southeast Asia and in the Indian subcontinent, said, uh, the idea of public ideology can be used to bridge the gaps between various interests in modern politics within nations by providing a set of values that includes the best of both conservative and liberal ideas. So trying to find this common ground, trying to find the common ground that everybody can, or as many people as possible, can identify with, which can inspire a new respect for international law by reference to universal truths that transcend all human political institutions, uh, domestic and international, as well as inspiring uh, the ideal constitution for a nation centered on God. So Father Moon had this idea of a, a model nation, even a model nation that could then inspire and empower other nations. Uh, so UPF strategy is to try to find this common ground, bringing people together, here we are, Meeting, talking, discussing, even eating together to find the common ground and values we share, to build bridges, make friends, overcome fear, prejudice, build trust and confidence, all the things that you will see on the website that Keith uh, uh, mentioned, to discuss common concerns and issues which affect us all, and then to engage in activities, not just conferences, but social action and projects which strengthen our commitment to one another and to the wider society and to the wider world. Uh, so an example of that is uh, what UPF did in um, Nepal. If you go to the UPF website, go to Worldwide Chapters, go to Nepal, scroll back to the 2000s, and you'll find that UPF played an integral role, along with a host of other organizations and people, in reining in the extremism that was rampant in Nepal. Uh, the Earth of Shining Path, you may have heard of them, and using 
uh, violence to a political end and uh, social change, and somehow managing then to bring them into the political process. So she did in 2007, they were speaking on the same platform, the Nepali Congress, the Maoist uh, Communist Party and the UML Communist Party, about 25 Communist Parties in uh, Nepal, many of them now defunct. Uh, that's the uh, Communist Party Maoist leader speaking at the Congress, so speaking rather than shooting, shooting words rather than bullets. That's an incredible testimony, not just to UBF, but to the fact that it is possible to reign in extremism if enough people give enough effort over a period of time, it is possible. So, just to localise then in Birmingham, we've been doing those kind of activities, especially my wife, myself and others, to bring people together, discuss our common concerns, uh, with, and then to look at the outcomes. So community cohesion in the Lord Mayor's uh, banqueting suite, uh, bringing together women, religious leaders, chief of police, uh, media and so on to discuss these issues. And then uh, we had a, a broke up into groups, rearranged the furniture in the council house, discussed, and one of the main findings that people felt was in order to have greater cohesion, we need stronger families. That was the outcome. We had young people, uh, elderly people, uh, people of all persuasions from all social strata discussing, and they felt that we need to strengthen the family. That was one of the main outcomes of that meeting. Bringing young people together, uh, I think one of Mark or somebody mentioned the Religious Youth Service Project, which is now under the uh, auspices of the UPF, bringing people together in Saltley and Nichols in the heartland of Birmingham, Muslim heartland of Birmingham, and doing something for the public good and for the local community, but from all over the world. It's an incredible model we have, which can be utilized and developed for the um, things that we want to do. Our children's home in India, again, uh, the initial seed money came from temples, mosques, gurdwaras, churches, synagogues in Birmingham. And we built that together with this uh, UOS project. And it's been an amazing, uh, incredible, um, an incredible impact beyond the drop in the ocean, which is, it is, even getting to national level prominence in India, while not even being a drop in the ocean. This project got a national Hindratan Award in 2003. So I hope this is giving us hope to see, as was alluded to again, the power of one, uh, the power of two, a small number of committed people, as Margaret Mead, some of you will know, said, can transform and change the direction of the nation or history. So the family then, we feel, in UPF, can be one vehicle to establish this common ground. And in standing for the traditional model of the family and marriage, it doesn't mean you're standing against something else. The media will try to say, if you're for this, you must be against that, but it's not like that. It's an inclusive vision, but it's saying that we believe the family is important, marriage is important. We want to come together around that. So, uh, it's not just a social institution, but it's a sacred institution. And over the last uh, 10 years, every year, we've had an event to recognize the importance and centrality of marriage and family. Bringing people from all persuasions together, all faiths, cultures, backgrounds, uh, in Christian churches, in Hindu bhavans and temples, I um, don't know if this got a pointer, but uh, former Lord Mayor, former Lord Mayor, city councillors, representatives from Queen in the West Midlands, people from the, the top, and a couple there just trying to cling on to life in Britain as refugees and asylum seekers. All in the same room, recognising the importance of the same reality. Amazing, actually. And it's growing. Uh, this year, in a Unitarian church in the city centre, again, three former Lord Mayors, five, six city councillors, Methodist ministers, Muslim leaders, but you and me also. Everybody there, together, recognising the centrality and the importance of the family and marriage, and recognising that, celebrating that, uh, from all our different faith traditions. Uh, so here you have two people, Congolese, people who came here with relatively next to nothing, and uh, Ramesh, the former Lord Mayor of, of Rugby. Uh, the city councillors, the youngest city councillor in Birmingham, uh, Mariam, and then the women's leader from a black church. church. Uh, just to conclude, so we, we absolutely believe that marriage and family can be a central point of common ground around, around which we can come together, celebrate, and then other things will automatically flow from that. I guarantee you. Because 
Making that effort to come together, there's a magical, mysterious something beyond the sum of the parts where incredible things happen and you'll be amazed. Uh, that's my experience with all of these projects. You never know where it will lead and uh, what can come from these, as exemplified by that little project in India. So finally, just to show you that it's not uh, a pipe dream, it's not just theory. So in Mindanao, as uh, Robbie can tell you far better than me, it's been helping to reconcile uh, warring factions of Christian and Muslim communities in Southeast Asia. The Family Festival, the International Peace Blessing, has been used, bringing dignitaries as well as uh, couples together, families coming together. And you probably can't read that, but it says, uh, the last sentence, instead of communal fighting, based largely along uh, religious lines, Mindanaoans came together, transcending but maintaining their religiosity in celebration of marriage and family as one family under God. It's powerful. It's powerful. It's not just some small idea whose time has come, but it's, it's got a track record. And the last uh, slide shows it's a, very, it's a very serious but very joyful occasion. So that's what we're going to do on February the 18th here in London and in Birmingham. You're all very welcome if you haven't participated already. Or even if you have, you can still come along and enjoy yourself. And uh, if you'd like to come to Birmingham, just to put a plug in for us, um, then it's going to be at the Arya Samaj Temple, which you saw earlier, and we're going to celebrate together and find this common ground on which we can stand, and then, as we heard from Mark, reach out and be a blessing to others. Thank you.